Hello everyone, welcome to the Finding Hope Show. My name is Alyssa Massey and I'm your host. In today's episode, episode 18, we're going to talk about compassion for COVID. So timely in today's day and age, I would say. And this is going to be an episode that is raw and uncut because sometimes things just need to be unfiltered. <laughs> so, compassion for COVID, COVID-19. We are all familiar with this damaging disease and sometimes deadly. So let's get started. Wear a mask, they say. No, don't wear a mask. Stay home. No, don't stay home. Take a vaccine. No, don't take a vaccine. These are just some of the scenarios you may have heard recently. I'm not giving justifications for any of these suggestions. We all have our reasons for believing what we believe. We also know that these are hard times for the entire world. But also, it's not the first time the world has experienced devastating trauma, nor will it be the last. Speaking of trauma, the one thing that we want when experiencing trauma that so many people are lacking today is, drum roll please, compassion. Now the definition of compassion, just to be clear, is sympathetic consciousness of others' distress together with a desire to alleviate it. I don't know about you, but when I click on the news, I do not see a whole lot of compassion. In fact, in order to see compassion, I have to be in charge of my environment. I have to live on purpose, ensuring that I'm around a positive support system and or I'm not waiting on compassion to just happen. But I am choosing to show compassion to others. The biggest act of compassion in all humanity is how Jesus had compassion on you and me, taking the weight of our sin and dying on the cross so that we could essentially have another shot. Without that act of compassion, you and I wouldn't exist. John three sixteen through 19 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is a verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Friends, Jesus had compassion on us. But as humans, of course we chose to sin. Adam and Eve, in the beginning of time, just like you and me have done at some point in our life, chose to disobey. But because of Jesus dying for our sins, we are not condemned as long as you choose to believe and accept God and accept his son, Jesus Christ. Light came into the world, yet many people today, unfortunately, still choose darkness. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. You and I couldn't change COVID from coming, but we can choose how to react to it. We can choose to be a light in the darkness. 
as Christians, we should have, especially have compassion on others. Just as we were shown compassion. So many times we forget this important concept. Even if you aren't a Christian, what's the golden rule? Do unto others as you'd have done to you. And Christians, I know of a witch that once lived in my community that has, I've seen have more compassion than some Christians I know. If a witch can have compassion, how much more should we as Christians have compassion? Are some Christians merely calling themselves as such just for the name's sake? Or to look good? If you're a Christian, are you at least trying to live as Jesus did? Wouldn't you agree that the world is bad enough? Instead of adding more negativity, join me in choosing to be kind. And in doing this, we may take the edge off. It's like a win-win, showing compassion when we ourselves are struggling is easier said than done, right? That's just it. It's not always easy, but it is doable. We have to do the work. Nothing worthwhile is ever easy. I'm sure that you've heard that. If we can press through and believe that when we give, it will be given to us. Then we will soon reap the benefits. And no, not all benefits are monetary. And the most important ones are not. The best benefits are those that warm the heart. When you give, you are creating joy in your heart and light in this dark world. So how do we do it? How can we better show compassion in the day of COVID? I'm going to give you three simple steps for a fresh start. Because let's face it, nowadays we need simplicity. Number one, stop being political. Whether you're left, right, up or down, we're all human, so stop treating other humans like animals and like everyone's the enemy. In a perfect world, we would all be working together toward peace. But we live in an imperfect world, so the least that we can do is be the encouragement the world needs. And then, just maybe, others will follow suit. Now, I confess... I'm not at all innocent here. I am guilty of sometimes reading the Facebook post full of drama to see what others are saying. That is, until I read something that turns my stomach and I snap out of it. I am very soon reminded that reading filth is not doing anything good for me or my mindset or anyone else. As a result of reading filth, I may get angry or depressed and therefore have a lack of compassion for anyone. And this is what we're trying to avoid. Instead of being all political all the time or at all, choose compassion. Like yourself, your opposer has a background and certain beliefs that enable them to think the way that they do. So pray for them. Remember, if they are your en enemy, or if you don't know, Jesus says to pray for our enemies. It's not always easy for everyone to do the right thing. But when others see us showing compassion when it likewise wouldn't seem possible, then maybe, just maybe, others will follow suit. If God wants them to believe something different, then trust that God is working 
on your enemy if you are praying for them. Instead of wasting time condemning others, we should use that time to improve improve and grow closer to God so that we can be more beneficial to society and hopefully more compassionate to others. Number two, make a goal to give more. Jesus says in Luke 6.38 to give and it will be given unto you. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Luke 12, 33-34 says to sell your pos possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out. A treasure in heaven that will never fail. Where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. It's easy to get wrapped up in our own thinking. We are naturally selfish people. In a way, I'm kind of thankful for my selfishness because I would not have known my need for a savior. My lack of imperfection reminds me that, hey, I want a better life. I don't want to stay stuck in a rut forever. Now, if you have lived a perfect life and don't know Christ, you may be in for a rude awakening because we do live in an imperfect world and the moment something big rattles your life i hope and pray that you know god and that you choose to turn to him because he is your savior even though we are selfish we can be more like jesus when we give and when we become more like jesus we have peace Peace and joy, that's all what we crave, right? Giving gets our minds off ourselves and help us to shift our focus onto helping others the way that God intended for. It is better to give. It truly is better to give than to receive. Giving helps to heal our minds and our hearts. In today's world, we could all use healing. But then the enemy wants to cause chaos, doesn't want us to have peace and joy. So bet your bottom dollar that he's going to try and keep you from giving. But choose instead to believe, to believe in the words that Jesus said, and you will reap the benefits. I know that I have. Matthew 16, 19 through 21, Jesus says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and venom destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Giving doesn't always have to be money. You can give your time. You can give a compliment. You can write a letter of encouragement to someone or message them on social media, on Messenger, on Instagram, whatever it is you use. You know, a simple great job sometimes is worth so much. As our nation deals with the pandemic, such as COVID, we need to remember that people, especially in these times, need encouragement and hope. Right now, you are needed. You are essential. Today, think of a way in which you can give to someone in need. You shouldn't have to look far. 
Number three, lastly and most importantly, to be more compassionate, spend more time with Jesus. God is love. Let us not forget that. If we trust in the world, it paints a very grim picture of love. In order to experience more love, we must plug in to the power source. What is that power source? God. God is the author of love. As we grow deeper in relationship with God and his son, Jesus, we learn how to love others. Our minds become more Christ-like, and as a result, we are happier and more compassionate people. It's hard to do with all the distractions, with all the social media, with the news coming in with all these horrible stories. I agree, it can be difficult. And that is why you must get up early in the morning and put the time in with Jesus. Open your Bible. Your joy, your happiness is worth it. In today's world, we are at a deficit. Currently, fear is taking over many people. But there is much love in the world. Sometimes we have to find it. We must be aware of it. We must be plugged into it. We can choose love over hate. Choose to be different. Choose a narrow path because the wide, wide path gets you lost in the crowd. What is the narrow path? For those that don't know, God and his son, Jesus Christ. Choosing to follow Jesus may not be the most popular route, but you can be assured that it is the best route. Don't wait your entire life until you're on your deathbed, until something horrible happens. Don't wait until that moment to start questioning, to start wondering where you're truly going. I mean, you don't want to go to hell. It's a bad place. I mean, you're burning in hell forever. And you don't want to live a life without Christ. Or live until that moment and reject him to find that out. Matthew seven thirteen through 14 says, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the path that leads to life, and only a few find it. Be the few. Because living forever in a beautiful place called heaven is worth it. And have you ever taken the popular path before to find that it was short-lived? I know I have. In fact, it was so enticing at the time that I went back to the wide path even though I knew the result would be temporary. Sometimes it's a hard rut to get out of. But finally, finally, I got it through this head, <laughs> this flesh. I got it through this flesh and decided that it's not worth it. I'm tired of it. I finally decided that I want to reap eternal rewards. And hey, I'm still working on that. I still have issues to resolve, but I'm trying I have the desire because I have the awareness. I have the awareness of a better life and the prayer that did work. I don't want to live my life here on earth for rewards or recognition. That always leaves a nasty taste in my mouth. 
that seeking eternal rewards is more satisfying for my soul because eternal rewards are rewards that last for a lifetime and might I mention include living with Jesus on streets of gold and there are mansions there the Bible says it wouldn't you agree that there are many people today living for a cheap thrill I know a few right and hey I've been there I see many people get a kick out of hating and cutting down others. Again, don't do it. It only reveals the treasure of your heart. In order to become more compassionate, loving human beings, we must live on purpose. You must reach out to Jesus. Open up your Bible and read what it's got to say. Spend more time in prayer and then the treasure of your heart will change you and you will bear good fruit. Matthew 7, 7 through 8 says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds and to the one who knocks the door will be opened. Amen to that. And lastly, I must say it's been a rough season, but that's just it. It's a season. And I have to read you a letter from high school coming up. For me, as well in this season, I've been sick, not with COVID. I've been tested and it was negative, but still no one likes sickness, period. You know, the devil seems to attack my voice, tries to make me cough as I'm going through a scripture. Just happened. But yet, you know what? I'm pressing through. You know, this is raw and uncut. It's a reminder that, hey, None of us are perfect. Sometimes we just got to let things be and roll with it. Because I don't know about you, but I'm not going to be silenced. If you got something good to say, don't hide it. We need more positivity now than ever. The stress of everyday life is hard enough. But we must choose to pray or try to pray, to press on, and do some good in the world. Refuse to stay stuck. And choose to grow, even when it's hard. God did not design us to become overwhelmed by anything of the world. You know, in fear, we know that fear doesn't come from God. So you're always fearful about sickness or what you may think is going to take your life. You don't have to be fearful of that because God will give you the grace for the place. Many times when I have fear and I'm consumed with sickness or an aching back or numbness. I mean, I've had some scary stuff happen. But you know what? From now on, when I have this fear about it, you know, and I'm praying, I'm seeking God, and if I have this hurtling fear come upon me, I'm like, nope, wait a minute, that's not of God. I'm going to make it through this. It is not my time. So remember that as new news bombards you with all the COVID stuff. You know, let's have compassion for people, mask or not mask. Vaccine or no vaccine. Just have compassion. And know that, you know what, there is a time for everyone. But we can still use common sense. We can still care for others. But remember, fear is not of God. And if it is your time, and you believe in God, you have a better hope. You have someone there with you. 
if you are experiencing a difficult time right now, no matter what, remember it is only a season. Ecclesiastes 3.1 says, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. So I'm going to read you that journal entry as follows. Quote, I'll forever keep trying for happiness and searching for my dream and gaining courage, focusing on God's will for me and my inner strength and using my gifts to determine who I am and for other people to know. The last note I got from my mom, which was last year sometimes, read, Dreams are what we're made of, and I'm working on yours. I got to believe that's true and not forget those words. I can't give up on hope. Not now, not ever. God won't let opportunity skip from my hands, nor will mom. Although sometimes my hands start to get slippery. Ecclesiastes 9.11 Time and chance happen to everyone. Now, I think God showed me that letter as a reminder that this is a season. You know, at the time, my mom was actually missing. But I, at that time, I did end up getting to see her again. We all go through different seasons. Sickness will be over soon. And never give up hope. When I'm reminded of these things, it helps me to get unstuck and to know that with Christ, all things are possible. But I do, I have that hope of Christ and I want you to have it too. I know that all these things, and that's what they are, things, are but a flicker compared to what is to come. But when I can look look in the Bible, open it up and read these stories, you know, I have hope. My mindset shifts to a better outlook. Hey, if you know God, you get to live forever in the place that God has prepared for us that believe. I'm here to remind you that you have the same hope. And if you don't believe in God, he is waiting on you today to accept him and believe him. To confess your sins because God forgives you. He sees you and he loves you. And remember this, with God, nothing can shake you. Last, may we go over that Ecclesiastes 3 scripture that's so reassuring and reminds us of all the seasons. Ecclesiastes 1 through 8. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. I want to thank all of you for joining me today, and I pray that you have a peaceful week full of joy and hope. Make it a goal to help someone else this week. And next episode, we'll be talking about persistence. That was actually supposed to be this episode, but I felt it in my heart to first do this podcast concerning COVID. Thanks again. And remember, don't give up because the best is yet to come.